the Great War through a London child's eye. November 11th, 1918. There's a glimmer of hope. Father's written and says there are rumours of the war ending soon. He was reading about it in the Continental Daily Mail when he had some leave in Paris. It seems the German people have had enough of war and the German army is on its knees. He says the men are having a sweepstake on when it might happen. Some of them think it will be Easter next year, but Father thinks it might be sooner, perhaps a few days away. Seems impossible to imagine, but I'm glad of it. Father sounded much happier than he has of late. Imagine if he was home for Christmas. I wonder. Edward! Edward! What's wrong? Why aren't you at work, Mother? Nothing's wrong, just wonderful news. An armistice has been announced, a truce that starts today at 11 o'clock. There are notices everywhere. Oh, Mother, that is wonderful. Oh, come on, let's go into town. This is cause for celebration. We arrived in the centre of London just shy of 11. The first stroke of the chime and men and women came scurrying out of the buildings. Northumberland Avenue was filled with thousands shouting and screaming with joy. Trafalgar Square was swarming. People were hanging out of the top of buses and waving flags. You could hear the church bells and factory halls ringing out. I've never seen so many people all celebrating. We were so happy. I'll never forget those scenes. December 20th, 1918. Things are beginning to change. Over the last few weeks, men have been returning from the front to be with their families again. Those fit enough to do so are going back to work. Hello, Sid. It's strange to have the men back in their uniforms. I mean, it's good, but noisy. Well, they've earned their ale. Why shouldn't they relax a bit? Let's get out of their way. That big lad over there looks like he's not done with the fighting yet. Some of the men have changed so much. Remember Mr. Sutton, the greengrocer? He's barely been seen since he got back from France. Shell-shocked, they call it. Can't talk, can't move even. His wife was talking to mother. Said she's more unhappy than she was when he was away. No word on your father? Nope. I reckon he deserted. You don't know that for sure. That's the trouble. We don't know anything. They've not even told mother if John's body will be returned home so we can bury him. What about your father? When will he be home? No idea either. <laughs> <laughs> there are so many men to fit on the ships, and father said that an armistice isn't peace. Some battles are still being fought. Although he says, the hardest battles will be in Parliament and on paper. Parliament? <laughs> what good are they? So the war's ended. Nothing's really changed. There's still nothing in the shops and fewer jobs to go around. And there's them promising us everything will be coming up roses. Mother's been told she's not needed anymore and she's fuming. They might even throw me out if a soldier needs the work again. And then what will I do? I didn't know what to say to Sid. Uncertainty was a way of life for us. I could only hope the new year would put things straight again. War through a London child's eye. Supported by the National Lottery through the Heritage Lottery Fund. Read Edward's diary at funkidslive.com slash great war.